Hey, welcome back to the Family Records. Every week we pull records at random from the Family Collection. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6, I'll tell you the story of the album, the music, and the musicians who created it. The next morning, short videos featuring music from those albums will drop. In this way, I can maintain and increase the quality of these videos for you, my family. Today's band released their first album in collaboration with Andy Warhol in early 1967. It was a commercial and critical failure. The album's controversial content led to its instantaneous ban from various record stores and radio stations, while magazines refused to carry advertisements for it. Less than a year later, the band fired Warhol and released their second album, which conceptually was meant to, quote, be against the summer of love in San Francisco, as well as capture the band's live sound. Let's drop the needle on. The Velvet Underground. White light, white heat. The band formed in New York in 1964, playing under several different names before settling on Velvet Underground a year later. In 1966, Andy Warhol became their manager, and for the next year, they would be the house band for his studio, The Factory. They released their debut album in 1967, and as mentioned, it was a commercial failure that led to the deterioration of the band's relationship with Warhol, although he still designed the front cover of White Light, White Heat. Recorded in just 12 days in September of 67, the album was modeled after the band's live sound and techniques of improvisation. Reading what the band members, as well as the producers, had to say about the process, one gets the feeling of a car driving too fast on a winding road, barely avoiding flying off. The band's lead guitarist, Sterling Morrison, said, quote, We were all pulling in the same direction. We may have been dragging each other off of a cliff, but we were all definitely going in the same direction. While using the Vox amplifiers and distortion pedals to their fullest extent during a session, recording engineer Gary Kelgren reportedly said, quote, You can't do it. All the needles are on red. Further technical issues abounded, including on the 17-minute track Sister Ray, which was intentionally recorded in one take. According to Reed, Kelgren walked out during the recording of Sister Ray. While mixing the album, they realized how the sound of it was distorted since the band played too loudly and they couldn't resolve the issue as there was limited studio time. Sterling Morrison considered the album a technical failure and actually quit the band for several days in response. Kale said the band neglected how playing loud would affect the technical quality of the record. And Morrison concluded that it was, quote, doomed due to its level of distortion and compression. Before its release, Tom Wilson, the band's producer, resigned from MGM Records, the owner of the band's label at the time, and would never work with the Velvet Underground again. Much like their first album, White Light, White Heat failed to be a hit for Velvet Underground. Although the band was riding high going into its release, they felt disappointed by the lack of promotion from their label MGM. The album was banned on the radio, peaked at 199 on the Billboard 200, that's lower than their initial release, and it was a commercial failure. The album was so maligned that several outlets, including Rolling Stone, refused to review it. Tension over the failure was so great that Lou Reed called a meeting where he fired John Cale from the band, both men being founding members. The world was not yet ready for the sounds and subjects which Velvet Underground expressed. However, given time, the musical and cultural significance of their creation was fully appreciated. White Light, White Heat sold over half a million copies before the death of Lou Reed in 2013. The album contains a distorted, feedback-driven, and roughly recorded sound, which is regarded as influential, foreshadowing the start of punk rock and the no-wave genre. It was heavily influential for artists and bands like Social Distortion, The Buzzcocks, Joy Division, David Bowie, and Nirvana. It would take decades to finally be truly appreciated, but the impact of Velvet Underground and their album, White Light, White Heat, cannot be understated. Coming from technically troubled recording sessions where the, pe the noise of the band caused massive distortions to a final product that the band and their label considered doomed. The album flopped, Velvet Underground would release their third and fourth albums in each of the following two years before all the founding members of the band had left. In time, their art would achieve the critical and commercial success the band had imagined. Sometimes the world isn't ready, but you have to make them listen anyways. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this story, feel free to drop a like. It lets us show you and others more of these records. And if you're new to the family, hit that subscribe button to join us and ring the bell so you never miss a record. Stay tuned now for all the unedited goodies. If you're into that, that's my rambling, some bloopers, stuff like that. So we'll see what I get to. Take care.
All right, so it's our extra, and this is a big day because we are making some changes today, um, starting with the number of albums that we're putting out a week. We're going from six to three. Now, why am I doing this? There's a few reasons, but the main one being that the quality of these videos is increasing, in my humble opinion, and I'm trying to add more quality to them as I go. Uh, my whole goal is to 1% better these videos every day, minimum, and never take a step back. And so with that in mind, over the last several videos that I've been editing, uh, I've been hitting some crunches. And I mean, you can tell also because this is the 24th episode and technically at six episodes a week, at four weeks, we should have had 24 last week. And I just was not able to get to it through a combination of different things. But mostly it comes down to the turnaround time of once I'm done this part of the video, going on my computer, which is not good enough to be doing these videos. So that really hurts me. Um, and going to my computer and just processing all the data. So not even doing any of the edits, just, just downloading everything and processing it all. That's at least an hour. The files that this camera pops out are huge. This camera is not much better. And, uh, and this is even considering that now that I've got mics, I can record the audio, just audio. I don't have to use video files. So literally I used to record all the audio with video files and that was just, just it takes so much time. And then with the videos also being longer now, I'm trying to hit that around 10 minute mark with about like half of that, a little over half, like two thirds being the story of the band. Sorry, I'm super itchy on my knee, so I'm gonna itch that, but um, two thirds of it being like the story that I'm, we're gonna tell about the music and then the last third being like this, this kind of shit. Um, but with those, Video is getting longer in general. I mean, let's average it and say like of the last four or five I've done, it's maybe like around 10 minutes. Um, that is also taking more computer time because I have to render everything to check the final video before I put it out so that I don't export something crappy, which I have done before. And that just ki just kills the, the, the process and kills the time and it's brutal. Um, anyway, I'm getting upset about it, but basically, just this whole thing, it takes too long for one person to do all of this and for my shitty computer to work with all of this. That computer is literally so fucked that I have to multiple times and edit, kill all the programs and open them all again because it just, it gets up its own ass and it can't fucking render anything. And you can tell I'm kind of annoyed about it. Um, so anyway, that's my impetus from going from six to three. Now we're still gonna get six videos a week because what I'm gonna do is have these story videos hit Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then have the shorts air Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday morning. So you get six videos, they're just spread out a little bit more. And I think this is smart too, in terms of from what I've learned of YouTube in, in this first month, which the video on that coming soon, but from what I've learned so far, YouTube needs a little bit of time, at least at this point in my career, YouTube needs a little bit of time to put the videos out there and show them to people and sort of get me feedback that I need in terms of, okay, like how do I make these better? How do I make these more appealing? How do I make them more entertaining? How can I be less fucking boring? Um, so I think it'll be smarter from that perspective too, where I can give the videos a bit more time to breathe without shoving another one out there. And the big thing it's gonna let me do is it's gonna let me diversify my content more. So the six videos a week, it was a great, starting point and for me I did it because I knew I could technically and I also felt like that was the fastest way for me to level up um, to build my skills up is by doing it a lot and doing it consistently and seeing the feedback and being able to take that on and definitely sorry my knee is driving me crazy and it definitely I just want to chop it off and it definitely has helped a lot. Like if you go and watch those first few videos compared to what I'm making now, it's night and day. Um, and obviously I owe that to a combination of the work. So doing all the videos and having the content that I can then look at myself, because of course, you know, I mean, like we all are, like I'm my own worst critic. And so I hate most of the videos, to be honest. Um, I just think that there's problems with so many of them, but it was good to ramp up 
and learn a lot quickly. Like I've been doing this, this is my fifth week doing this. I've done this for a month and I would humbly say that the progress from the start to now is good. Um, you know, if I'm 1% better every day, then I'm about 25% better now than I was when I started. So that's good. Um, but yeah, I, the big thing is I don't want to burn out. I don't want to set myself an unrealistic goal and I don't want to provide you guys lower quality content. Now that we're increasing the quality and we're adding more B-roll and I'm trying to find relevant images to go with what we're talking about and I realized that I didn't turn around the album again. Oh my God! Uh, and I want to record that middle part. And this is another reason I'm doing it. It's because the way that I'm setting this up now I can do all of my writing and recording on one day and do all my editing the next day. And that means that there's not this time crunch in one day of doing all the stand-up stuff and then doing all the editing, which is the case today where I don't feel like the middle story that I've put together, like I could do more takes of it and make it better, but I legitimately do not have time to do more takes of it now because I gotta go edit this thing. So, this is my ultimate impetus for this, is that I know in six takes, I can do a better job than I can in two or three takes. Um, and I just don't have the time right now to do that. Like I don't have the ability to sit around here and say, hey, I'm gonna do another take, I'm gonna do another take. I have to go with good enough. And that's not good enough for me. I'm not happy about that. I'm super unhappy about it. So starting tomorrow, I will be able to do a full album, write my scripts, do as many stand-ups as I need, and leave the shit processing on the computer overnight, which again is great. I can make better use of the time that I actually have um, by having stuff downloading in the evening when I'm not even gonna be using the computer. This is why it was so hard for me last week to get that sixth album, which I never did. This is the sixth album technically today because I would run into those issues where I just couldn't, I just could not get the turnaround and I couldn't leave the computer rendering something and come up here and listen to the album for a couple hours because I knew that within an hour it'd be ready to go and then I needed to get back to my, to my work. So anyways, this is a long way of explaining why I'm doing less albums. We're gonna have the quality be higher on all of them. This week I'm gonna do four and that's gonna catch me back up to a nice set. So this is the 24th, this is technically number six from yesterday and then I'll have more albums Wednesday and Friday this week and one more bonus one someday. So I don't know when, but you're gonna get three more albums this week for a total of four. That'll put us at 27 episodes and then starting the week after, three full episodes like this a week, three full shorts the day after featuring the music from the album. And I'm trying to increase the quality on those too. You know, again, just this just across the board. We can, and it is stuff too that like this, the Eagles, the Eagles review that I did, they are killing me with the copyrights on that. They have hit me like five or six times now with copyrights, including a fresh one this morning. Those fuckers at the labels. Again, I do, I do not understand at all the issue with playing 10 to 15 seconds of music. No one is gonna be able to listen to that and get the experience of a full album. And yet these jerks, want to come after me for it. So anyway, they bl blocked that video again. I'm gonna to have to go back and edit it again and put another video up again. Um, but that's the kind of shit too, where if I give myself some more time, I can deal with those issues because I had to re-edit that short like four or five times before it even got up initially, before they manually went and checked it now. Um, and, and it was terrible. And it was like, you're just pulling your hair out because I don't have the time for this. So. This new format, it will give me the time, it will let me deal with those fucking assholes when they try to hit me. Um, and ultimately, it will mean that I will make better content for you guys. So that's my big concern is, I wanna create better content for you guys. I wanna tell these stories better. Um, I think I'm getting better on camera, but again, like that's all shit. I've got, I've got some buddies of mine who um, do this professionally so I can talk to them and figure out what I'm fucking up. And uh, yeah, again, just the main concept is be better for you guys, make everything better for you guys, um, make the quality of the content, it never dips, it only goes up. So that's where we're gonna go from here with the channel. Uh, I'm sorry that was a super long rant and I swore a bunch. Uh, these label fucks are pissing me off today. Uh, this is a good album for that uh, because these guys definitely would have felt that same way. 
And uh, yeah, I like this album. Uh, not my favorite, certainly, but I definitely respect the impact that it had on music. And I'm sorry that I've only given like a 15, 20 second thoughts on this. Really today is just like the cap on the old way of doing things. We're at 24 episodes now. I'll get three more during the week. They'll be more focused. They'll be better, only getting better. And then we'll go from there. So thank you all. Appreciate you all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to my ramblings. If you got all the way to the end, thanks. Uh, I don't know why, but thank you. Um, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, join the family, do all the good YouTube stuff. The more you do those things, the more that YouTube thinks that these videos are actually worthwhile and the more that it shares it to more people who also will hopefully find them worthwhile. Thanks a lot. Take care. I love you guys. Bye.